This week on Court Case, it's the 75th anniversary special, and it's time we talk about dynasties. Look, the NBA have shortlisted their top five NBA dynasties, and my vote went to the Chicago Bulls from the 95 to 98 era. I know, BJ, I tried to extend it and put it over across the whole decade, but blame the NBA. You know, they were actually shorten things down. But the Chicago Bulls definitely get the recognition they deserve for their eliteness during that period of time throughout the whole 90s and making the whole basketball community fall in love with basketball again. But what I would turn around and say to you is it's interesting just to see some of the names on that list. You've got, of course, the Boston Celtics who dominated from the late 50s all the way through to the 60s, the Showtime Lakers, the Big Three, the original Big Three in Boston, in Mikhail Parrish, and of course, Larry Bird, Chicago Bulls who we've already spoken about. And for some of the modern fans, the Golden State Warriors, Steph, Clay, and Draymond, AKA the Splash Brothers and the cousin that they have as well as Draymond. <laughs> so, since court is in session this week, I'm gonna take a sip back because I feel sometimes, when you're talking about greatest dynasties, we talk about the Chicago Bulls all the time and we can sit here and we can talk about the accolades over the whole of the 90s, arguably having the greatest player of all time in the game as well as their achievements and never ever letting anybody take them to a game seven if we're talking about the entire dynasty. But I'm gonna hand over to my two brothers right now because I wanna hear how interesting or what your perception is of the top five dynasties and whether or not you would agree with me in time and saying that Chicago Bulls are the greatest dynasty of all time. Momunsi, why do I have a feeling that this is not gonna go well down with you. <laughs> Tell well, me. First of all, JD, I wanna say happy birthday. <laughs> oh, I because it's you, JD's bro. birthday this week. And guys, do you know what I'm buying JD for his birthday this week? I'm buying JD a dictionary so he can look up the definition of the word dynasty. Okay. Because when you talk about a dynasty, you're talking about longevity. Wait. You have selected the Chicago Bulls from 1955, 1995 to 1998, that won three championships. That is not a dynasty. Three championships in three years is great. It's dominant, it's amazing. That's not a dynasty. A real dynasty is a team that won 11 NBA championships, eight of which were consecutive. A feat that has never ever been replicated in sports. Eight championships in a row. Imagine if a team, think about how excited people got when the Warriors won three championships in four years. Imagine a team winning eight championships in a row. That's a dynasty. They laid a foundation for a franchise to continue that success in decades after as well. That's a true dynasty. The definition of the word dynasty, that is it. Okay, my only retort to you before we turn around and, and flip to BJ, and you'll get a chance to respond again, is very simply, when you look at the percentages over all of these dynasties who won the most amount of games, Chicago Bulls is top of that list. So we could talk about dynasties and we could talk about the different number of teams that's in the league at that moment in time. No one's taking the championships away from the Celtics, but I do think the number of teams has to play, has to play in terms of consideration. And we both agree, and I've heard you say it, not all championships are built equally. So some of those championships were then teams that they knocked off and some of those great players that never won championships because of that 95 to 98 team is why I equivalent them to a dynasty. That's my, that's, that's my answer for you right there. You will get another chance to talk because I can see you sitting itching in the courtroom. But I want to flip to my brother on the West Coast. Look, talk to me. How are you feeling? In terms of the teams that are shortlisted there, you don't have to agree with any of it because you can dip right through the whole 75 years of the league. Who would be your top dynasty in NBA history? You know, well, JD, I must address the mathematics of the situation. No matter how you slice it, dice it, look at it, you know, you got to put the Boston Celtics as the, the most dominant and a true dynasty in every sense of the word, the way they were able to do it. They, they have 11 championships. There's nothing else to be said. However, I do want to point this out. The San Antonio Spurs should be on that list. Whew. Okay. Now, out of respect to the game, we always, we always have to respect the game. We can have our opinions, we can make our arguments, but we have to respect the games and to the viewers here. The, the San Antonio Spurs, won more games over the career of Tim Duncan than any team in the history of the NBA. And from that, they went to six NBA finals and they won five. That's the definition of a dynasty. They were there, okay? So without question, they should be in the conversation. I'm not saying they are. If you're asking me who is the greatest dynasty, 
maybe of all of sports, it's the Boston Celtics. I don't care how many teams. I don't care when they were playing, how they were playing. The Boston Celtics with Bill Russell there were the definition of a dynasty and all teams, all teams. I don't care if you win two in a row, three in a row. We have to point back to them because they laid the foundation of what a championship should look like. They won eight in a row. We got excited because LeBron went to nine consecutive finals. He didn't win eight. He didn't win <laughs> nine. We get excited now. Now they went to eight and won eight. I don't care if they went to game seven. I don't care if they went to game 12. They won. And that was all led by Bill Russell and company, the late Red Auerbach, and all of those players that put on those green jerseys. So when you say a dynasty, there's the Celtics, and then we can talk about whoever else you want to talk about. But I want to make sure that we here at least acknowledge the San Antonio Spurs because we got to give them the proper respect. Look, there is no two ways about it. The 11 championships across 30. There's no two ways about it. Yeah, they are a dynasty. But BJ, my only question to you would be, surely the number of competition that you have and the quality of competition... How many Hall of Famers were on that Boston Celtics team? That's what we're talking about here. In terms of lopsided... JD, they're in the Hall of Fame because they won I'm not eight championships that, in a row. Wait, they I'm weren't not, in the Hall of Fame I'm not, and then on the Celtics. I'm not taking they're that in away, the Hall of Fame I'm not taking that from, away the from them. What I'm trying to turn around and say to you is, in terms of the lopsidedness and the quality and the depth that they had, it's easy to turn around and say, look, I'm a part of that team and we're going to win this and we're going to win this and we're going to win this consistently. I'm just saying, looking at the competition that, for example, in my pick, the Chicago <clears> Bulls <throat> would have had in that situation, how many different teams they had to pick off. And it's so interesting, BJ's love for the game. Because BJ, you're part of a dynasty and yet you chose another dynasty, which is just shows your credit and how much you appreciate this I game. But I well, just need to know, do you not feel that that, in terms of the number of teams and the quality of competition at that moment in time should be taken into consideration? No, I don't, because, you, you, because I can't compare what was going on then in the 60s. At, you know, there was segregation, popularity of the game. Who was allowed to play the game? What were the rules of the game? Like, there are so many things. Now I just want to compare and be like, oh, everyone had an opportunity to play. There was grassroots basketball, you know? There were so many different things. I can't imagine what Bill Russell had to go through, what he had to go through personally, let alone players of color and the integration and all the things they had to do. So there were so many other things going on that I want to give those people the respect. Somehow, some way, they figured it out and they won. And all of those players who played Red... What did Red Arback have to go through to put together that team mm. during that time and during that era? So there are a lot of things that's going on. It's easy to compare. I think it's fun to compare. But knowing what I know and experiencing what I've experienced, I want to, you know, hey, congratulate those people because they laid the foundation why the game is popular today. We're sitting here talking about and debating about something that happened, what, 50 years mm -hmm. ago. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. That's a, that's a beautiful thing because... They laid the foundation, but more importantly, they were the champions. I don't care how many teams were playing. If there were two teams, those were the best players of that era at that particular time, and I know how difficult that is. So I want to acknowledge those players, acknowledge those people who put on those uniforms and made it possible that we can continue to have these conversations 40, 50 years later because I would hope that someone would continue this conversation 40 or 50 years from now. He pulled on my heartstrings when he said segregation, you know? He did. <laughs> <laughs> pulled on my heartstrings when he said segregation. And look, I'm a man of the people and I'm fair in this courtroom each and every time. And I will turn around and say, listening to both of you as basketball savants, we will U-turn. And the new slogan will say that the Boston Celtics, the original Boston Celtics, is the greatest dynasty. In say it again, say again for JD. The Out original Boston Celtics, I said it with chest, is the greatest dynasty of all time, but you can have your say, of course, every time on the timeline. You heard BJ turn around and recommend the San Antonio Spurs and their time with the Twin Towers. Look, the 2000 Lakers maybe deserve a consideration. Some people will turn around and talk about the big three down in MIA. And of course, there was another big three that we didn't even consider in terms of with the Boston Celtics. So look, have all of your say, make sure you get involved in the timeline and 
Keep making Mo smile, because look, when they turn down, can you just make sure that Mo's correct? <laughs> that man right there is very, very happy after hearing that his prediction was correct.